Hello and welcome back to the channel and in today's video we are going to be going to a 11th century church walking down a Roman road and looking for a Roman road junction and um, possible location of a Roman fort. So this is the east to west road um, I think currently now it's the 283 and goes from Brighton, Stenning area through to Washington where it picks up with the A24 that goes north to south. But 2,000 years ago there would have been centurions stomping along this road. Couldn't tell you how old these trees are but this road is flanked by these massive oak trees. Um, this one's pretty big, the one down there is enormous. Um, oak trees um, don't know how you would age them without cutting them down um, but uh, if we put the camera down and get me to walk over to that you'll just see quite how huge that tree is there we go hardly get my arms around it that looks like there's an old footpath here, but good luck getting to it. So looks like the landowner hasn't maintained this footpath. And we'll see later in the video, there's other sections of it which uh, haven't been maintained. Right here, we've got another one of these massive oak trees uh, lining the side of the road. About 2,000 years ago, Romans would have been walking right past Chanterbury Ring, and it would have looked very different 2,000 years ago. It was only as soon as the 1600s that Charles Goring planted all of these beech trees on top of a Neolithic hill fort. So right here you can see quite how straight the road can be in places. Um, and I'm not sure what part of the road is Roman. It's obviously been 2000 years since this was a uh, Centurion's road. Now this is normally Full of busy traffic but thanks to possibly an accident back there uh, the police have closed this road. So this area is all part of the Wiston estate and this is the trademark sign to show that this is one of the properties of the Wiston estate. Not sure whether it's rented or owned these days. So the Romans like to uh, keep their roads as straight as possible and here we've got quite a large hill at the bottom of Chanctonbury and where the tree is right there is where the road is running along there and um, it's in the valley between another hill uh, where the church is on and this is where I think the location of the Roman fort is. Um, now these forts weren't uh, used to um, control an area they were a stop a pit stop essentially so wherever you had a junction uh, they would build basically somewhere for you to rest and what I'll try and do is I'll try and get an image from Google Maps and I think these tree lines here um, almost indicate that and you can see here it's quite flat um, that this is a possible location of a Roman fort and we believe uh, that the road split around about here or slightly further up in that direction and then headed off in that direction to Harden. Uh, but what we're going to do now is we're going to head up to Buncton Church or Buncton Chapel. It's an 11th century chapel and um, going to have a look to see if there's any evidence of terracotta pottery that can be seen in the construction of the church. Uh, we saw that at Harden Church um, which is at the other end of this road. Got an amazing display of fungus here. Let me know what you think this type of fungus is. I'm going to guess chicken of the woods. Let me know what you think.
this is the All Saints Chapel or Church um, at Buncton. And it's now located in the Whiston area, which is east of Ashington and uh, next to Whiston House. We believe that this church was constructed in the 11th and 12th century and the area of bunk tune was recorded in the doomsday book of 1066 it's mainly constructed uh, in a norman style um, with the addition of a chapel in the 13th 14th and later modified in the 15th century here we see what looks to be like saxon arches and we think that this was recovered from a nearby priory and added to be decorative on the outside of this extension to the chapel. Along with these arches, um, we see some large extensions and a Gothic window added to the back end of the church. Uh, looks totally different on the back end of the church as it does to the front end. It's clearly a much later extension. When we get to the southern side of the church, uh, there's these rather interesting arches again on the outside of this section. They're Norman in their styling. Um, and again, it could be that this uh, archwork has been recovered from uh, a building nearby. Um, these do look very different from the other parts of the church. Um, there's a small bell tower at one end and it can be accessed from inside. I'm not sure what this is. Uh, looks like a later edition, um, possibly modern. And here, as I was, as I was alluding to earlier, is uh, some ceramics and limestone, much older than the flints uh, surrounding it. Um, and it's quite normal. Uh, we've seen this at Hardham uh, for at this age, the church to be made up from recovered building materials in the local area. And so this leads me to believe that there was either a villa or a stock fort um, of Roman origin nearby. Uh, and it would have probably been there for you know, 500 to 1,000 years uh, before it was uh, destroyed and reused to make this church. This is the northern door of the church. Massive uh, limestone lintel over the top of the entranceway. And uh, churches in England and Sussex are all aligned in a very specific way uh, with the main window to the east um, and they're aligned east to west. And it's unusual to have a northern door, uh, much more normal to have a southern door as we're looking at. Uh, this is believed to be bricked up on most churches uh, to prevent the devil from coming in almost TARDIS like in this church it looks quite small on the outside but when you're inside there there's a lot more room so here we've got the bell ringers rope you can see not a particularly big or complex church it will hide away back there like a cupboard and um, yeah, it's a it's a chapel rather than a a church. Okay, that's where you do your baptizing. Like um, most churches, got some great sounds in here. Uh, obviously, nothing soft to soak up any noise. So you've got these echoes. Too early in this church for stained glass windows, so you've got the proper light coming through there. Slightly more fancy end window in here. Absolutely magnificent arch here, and oh wow, so we've got some of the older paintings that we've seen at Hardham Church right there on the wall where some of the 
white wash has come off. Interesting uh, carving there. Not sure what that's meant to be. Comment down below if you know what that is meant to be. Interesting. Um, and almost here yeah, we've got like a an end seam. We've got this uh, cutting in of the stone here. So makes me think that this sort of line here was the end of the church and then this uh, end section here has been tapped on at a later date. Same over there but got an old window. Move out the lights so the camera can refocus but we've got an old window there. So um, it's great to be able to see that there, but it's strange that you'd have a window there and then a, a window there. So I would imagine that would have been an original one and a, a later one there, but then that window and edge is over this arch. Um, this um, archway here, when we were outside, we could see the old entrance to the church. So all bricked off now, but uh, coming in, that is the south door entering now through the north door and you can see the stones here much newer stones um, being utilized and again when you look into these corners got some very old stonework over there uh, opposed to this newer cut stone and even the archway and it's cut stone um, interestingly that arch over there matches with that window there right underneath the beam so I'm guessing the archway is giving the beam strength maybe don't know strange that they would move that window over into that location when we get back into this chapel here doesn't seem to be any evidence of the outside arches Curious, isn't it? Another bit of the old paintings poking through there. Um, I mean, it almost looks like stonework, but I would imagine that is, a, is the same colour as the relief over there. So I imagine it's a, a painting rather than a, um, an actual um, brick, exposed brickwork. Uh, here you can see how fabulous the condition this window is in. So this is obviously a, a much later renovation right here. So again, exposing some of the brickwork in this corner here. And you can see it's in really good. Look how sharp that, that line is there. That's, that's new. That's new stone. Amazing old chapel, absolutely amazing. Um, just have a look at the beams and we'll see if we can see any difference on the beams because um, they're obviously cut, but this one's oh, a lot smaller and different roof design. We've got um, oh, this panelling on the roof up here, whereas down there. Yeah, different, different beam shapes. So obviously built by two different people. Uh, and that one, much thicker timbers there. So they built that to last, didn't they? So we've got a little relief in the floor there. So right at the back of the church's uh, gate, brings you out uh, into these fields and um, got a site of Chantonbury ring there and I did note when I was walking around the graveyard one of the Gorings or a couple of the Gorings potentially are buried there and uh, when we have a look around this field we can see some of the houses um, that would 
this uh, church would have served over in the distance there um, the two over there much older and on the other side of that tree line there is Whiston House um, home of the Goring families, although I don't think they live there now, um, living in Finden, I believe. So what we're going to do is we're just going to head round this um, field, um, quite a short walk through the field, and uh, we're going to shoot out on Spit Handle Lane, and there we have got a old 18th century water fountain. As you can see from the approach in, there is a, a little brook or stream that runs through the valley just before you climb the hill to Buncton. And um, yeah, that uh, would be coming out from the South Downs. I'm not sure where it comes out actually, to be honest, because. Um, there is a stream or that you do see a lot of water running down the main road that comes from Chanctonbury Hill uh, to the Western Crossroads. Um, so, yeah, I'm just going to head across uh, and pick you up on the other side of this field. Yeah, so I'm not sure whether the footpath has been diverted or whether the farmers just completely ignored that. Um, but obviously you have to walk round the edge of this field um, and then pick the footpath up here. And it's like we're walking through another old stream. Luckily not running today. And uh, head over to the corner of the field over there. Yeah, straight across that field and then we're heading down this pathway here. Conveniently signposted. So if you wanted to do this in reverse, you could do. Uh, come in this way and come in the back of Buncton. But you would miss out on that wonderful entrance uh, across the brook or stream. And Right here we catch sight of the old water fountain. So this is located on Spit Handle Lane. I have actually shown it in a previous video. Um, but yeah, it doesn't grow old to be honest, although it is growing old. Uh, yeah, look at that amazing structure. Uh, each one of these uh, cornerstones displaying a different relief on there and in a three-sided one unusual to see a three-sided one but yeah uh, amazing stone on the top I and mean, then look at this I'm not sure where this um, has been taken from but amazing old piece of uh, stone and um, yeah amazing spout here so, um, yeah, lion spitting spring water. Uh, doesn't look too great today, but the plants seem to be liking it. And I'm sure um, if you had one of these uh, filter systems, life straws or something like that, it'd be perfectly good. Um, here we've got the memorial that this was put in for uh, Queen Victoria. And we've got Victoria Dell. ERA Rit Reg. So, brilliant. So, thank you very much for watching this video. If you could hit the like and subscribe to the channel, you'll get to see all my content and it's free of charge, but it will help me reach a bigger audience. Thanks for watching.